So um, I, I, I'm, I'm actually not certain print will, will disappear. I think if you look at the, uh, uh, the history of media, what happens is things diminish and somehow we spend uh, the same amount of time or slightly more time but doing lots of different things. I mean, you know, people were saying that, 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 that radio would die. People were saying cinema would die. Vinyl is coming back, uh, you know? And, I, and I, I, so I, I'm, I, I still think there is a need to, to, to hold something. Mind, mind you, I take Mark Thompson's point that actually we've all got to adapt our, our business models, but I'm not pessimistic about this because I think quality wins through. And I think um, in an environment where there is a huge amount of noise, then, then places that people can turn to to get journalism uh, that they can trust uh, in all this noise, where do I go to to find out what's really happening? I think the organisations that stand for that and independent journalism and journalism which is not afraid of uh, doing difficult stories, I, I, I have confidence that although print may come down, actually through other methods um, uh, we will grow. I mean, in the UK, it's, it's interesting. I mean, as we adapt and, and, and now our younger audiences particularly, but all audiences are consuming us more on this than they are on, on, uh, on screen or, or radio. In, well, that's where the growth is anyway. But when you do surveys and say, so what is the role of the BBC in the UK? Well, people come back and say, I might consume three or four uh, different sites or methods of getting my news, but I come back to the BBC to find out actually what's happening. So I, I, I think that's kind of a really important part of what our job is, and I would imagine it's the same for you. Also, um, people who are committed to saying we'll do difficult stories and we'll do stories that are uncomfortable and that in all the rest of the noise in the online world or the social media world, um, we'll concentrate on. So I, I, I'm, I, I'm confident that good journalism will win through, although I don't underestimate for one moment the difficulties, you know, even for us, about working out how you adapt. Mark, one of the uh, things which, we, which the advent of social media has brought is we see a lot of public personalities, including politicians and government officials, saying that I don't need you as an intermediary anymore. Yes. I can just go on Twitter, I can go on Facebook, I can go on Instagram, I can talk to millions of people directly. You know, and this is happening more and more. Yes. Uh, how does it change the way in which media operates, uh, especially while dealing with People in authority, people in power, people with uh, public following. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's it's it's. Uh, it, I, I know social media uh, here is particularly big for uh, campaigning. It's the same in in our country uh, as well. Um, I, I think it goes back to what I was um, saying about where do you go to to find out actually what is happening and who is speaking the truth. I mean, you know, people are smart enough to know if you're getting a political message from, let's say, X party or Y party. Uh, in, in the UK, that that's obviously going to be what they want you uh, to know. We had this in a, in a big way during the referendum campaign on um, should we be a part of the European Union um, or not. Um, and I think for, for all of us, uh, our role in, uh, in, in this uh, age where people use social media to go directly is twofold. One is a kind of a negative role in the way, and that's fact-checking. I mean, where do I go? I go back to what I was saying. Wait, where do I go to find out actually what is happening as opposed to what I'm being told by that side over here or that person over here? I think that's kind of really, really important. I think the other thing, though, is that um, social media, we all know, is driving us into a narrower and narrower view of the world because actually that's what algorithms do. You know, you like that? We'll give you more of it. And I think for those of us who stand back from that and say, actually... We want to widen uh, uh, the, the view of the world that you have. Um, it, it, we then need to think creatively, how do we do that? But I think that role uh, for those of us devoted to saying there is more of the world and social media will, will tell you is, uh, is, is very important. I mean, I'm um, almost after an algorithm that is uh, a, a serendipitous algorithm that actually says, I, I, you know, I'm saying to, to, to the BBC, um, we should believe in curation. Yeah, yeah, of course use algorithms to, to, to say you're interested in this aspect of the EU policy or, or Indian policy, or what it happens to be. But that serendipitous relationship that we, in, in the, in, we do as, as uh, broadcasters, you do as newspaper um, people, where I start off there and suddenly I'm over here, much harder in the sort of focused algorithmic world we're in. So how do we, how do we find that serendipitous route through, I think is really important.